Hello and welcome to our Key Stage 4 Options Information presentation. I'm Catherine Stevenson, Head Teacher of Burrowbridge High School, and I'm going to set the context really of the options process and our curriculum before passing over to other colleagues. We're hoping that this presentation gives you the information that you need to know, but as ever, please contact school if at the end of it anything isn't clear. So at Burbridge High School, our curriculum is broad and balanced so that we can fulfil our commitment to making sure that we have aspiration for all. So we make sure that actually children have the opportunities to study in a way which will ensure that they get really high quality grades, but also that they will have the opportunity to develop the skills and confidence to make an active contribution to the communities in which they live and in which they work in the future. So what we do, we have a number of things which will actually support this. And one of those is that we have a stage not age curriculum. This means that students take core subjects across the two years in years 10 and 11. And although they will choose all four option subjects at the end of year nine, they actually study and complete two in year 10 and then have a further two in year 11. In reality, this means that classes are mixed year 10 and year 11 students, and this brings a number of benefits for both year groups and in actually raising achievement. It also means that they have five hours per week for each subject, so they become immersed in the subject, and this gives them the opportunity to really study things in depth. So to show you what that looks like, at the top you can see that we've got that core curriculum in year 10 being taught, along with two option subjects, and students will take their two option subjects exams in the summer of 2022. They will continue in year 11 studying the core curriculum with the exams in those things in summer 2023. And they'll also start their next two option subjects and their exams will also be in summer 2023. So by completing two in year 10, it gives them a full all round experience of actually doing a GCSE, going through the revision process and sitting an exam and it gives them that time to reflect upon their approach and then they obviously go into year 11 and begin to do that with a greater number of subjects. So I'm now going to pass to Mrs Bloomfield who will outline some of the benefits of a stage not age approach. Hello I'm Mrs Bloomfield one of the associate assistant head teachers. There are many benefits of stage not age. It prevents exam bunching at the end of year 11, so students don't have to sit every single exam at the end of year 11. They do the two in year 10, they have them in the bank ready. It does give them a lot of encouragement, motivation and focus, and it does give them that experience of revising and how to go about their exams. Teaching and learning is much more immersive because they have 10 hours a fortnight rather than the five. I'm sure you've got some questions. What happens if a student takes a subject in year 10 and then wants to pick it up again at A level having had a full year off? What if a student chooses a practical subject requiring um, practice but then doesn't take it till year 11? You're probably also worried that your child doesn't have the necessary maturity for exams at the end of year 10. You really have no need to worry. As you can see, our year 10 in August 2020 proved that yet again they can get the highest grades possible. It, this also enabled them to go on and study at A level. You can also see that we did get the grades 7 to 9, which are the highest grades that you can possibly get in a large number of subjects from the year 10s. They even got the top grade of a grade 9 in year 10. So these are the subjects students have to study. Students get to choose four other subjects with some recommendations from us. We have recommended a route for students to follow. This is in the letter that you will have received via parent mail. They take the two options in year 10 and then the other two in year 11. This does mean they're in mixed classes with other year groups. The next pages have the different subjects you can choose. This page has the EBAC subjects, so the History, Geography, Computer Science, French and Spanish. We do recommend students take at least one of these. These are the subjects that students won't have had 
much experience at, at Key Stage 3, so business and computer science. There's also health and social care and travel and tourism. You'll have noticed some of the courses said BTEC at the end of them. These are the more vocational courses and have a greater element of coursework. Students who are thinking of studying A-levels should really be taking GCSEs rather than BTECs. You may be slightly unfamiliar with the new grading system. GCSEs are graded 1 to 9. The DfE consider a 5 to be a good pass and a 4 to be a standard pass. A 4 is equivalent to the old C. For BTECs, a C is equivalent to a level two pass. So now students need to choose which options they're going to take. They need to choose one from each of the columns. They should not choose both computer science and ICT as these are too similar. You'll have received a letter on parent mail with a link to the Google form. Please complete this by the 22nd of March. Thank you.